In your hymnals, page 352. Page 352. My hope is in the Lord. I don't see them on there. Page 352. My hope is in the Lord who gave himself for me and paid the price of all my sin at Calvary. For me he died, for me he lives, and everlasting Life and light he freely gives. No merit of my own his anger to suppress. My only hope is found in Jesus' righteousness. For me he died, for me. And everlasting life and light he freely gives. And now for me he stands before the Father's throne. And he shows me his wounded hands and names me as his own. For me he died, for me he lives, and everlasting life and light he freely gives. His grace has planned it all, tis mine but to believe. And recognize his work of love and Christ receive. For me he died, for me he lives, and everlasting life and light he freely gives. Okay, Richard, how about leading us to the throne of grace for the word of God this evening, please? All right, let's look into the book of Psalms 119. Psalms 119, and uh, let's, uh, I think we're ready for 143, if I remember right. Page 1, Psalms 119, 143. Trouble and anguish have taken hold of me, yet thy commandments are my delight. And we see 144, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. All right, I think the last time we were together, uh, that's, I think that's where we left off. Now that idea of gotten hold of me is interesting in the Old Testament. And if you'll look at the book of Job for a minute, the book of Job, chapter 11. Job, chapter 11. Job, chapter 11, verse 7. Canst thou, by searching, find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? And we put that with 1710 of Job. Uh, we may, let's stop off at 14 for a minute. 
14.1. Man that is born of woman, few of days and full of trouble. That idea of trouble and anguish. Uh, that word trouble there is what we're looking at in uh, Psalms 119. Now, now 17 verse 10. 17 verse 10. But as for you all, do ye return and come now? For I cannot find one wise man among you. My days are past. My purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. They change the night into day, and the light is short because of darkness. I, if I wait, Sheol is mine house. If I made my bed in the darkness, I have said to corruption, Thou art my father. To the worm, Thou art my mother and my sister. <laughs> where there is now, where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? That's why we sang, My hope is in the Lord tonight, who made heaven and earth. Okay. And this idea of trouble and anguish trouble and anguish found me the description is affliction caused by his enemies uh, and we and we know that David writes a lot about his enemies it seemed like he had enemies on every side underneath around over <laughs> everywhere he stepped everywhere he went David had enemies um, we can we can apply a secondary application we have the world the flesh and Satan they're our enemies, aren't they? And those that are enemies of the gospel. So it described affliction. And it describes the distress of a people besieged. That's the idea behind anguish, trouble. Uh, it's like a, a people besieged. Now, that's a um, kind of a military idea. Uh, to be besieged, like Jerusalem. Uh, it's the city of peace, yet it is the most besieged city in history. It's when an enemy comes up to a city, and when they besiege it, they cut it off. And in, in those days during of war, uh, they would uh, begin to entrench, and then they would try to fight and get closer and closer, and then they'd th send stuff over the walls, uh, and it, it got pretty nasty. And the idea was to cut the city off from any aid or any food, uh, water, what have you, uh, and get them to yield that way. That's the idea of anguish. It's to feel besieged. Let's look in Jeremiah 19 for a minute. Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen flask, and take of the ancients of the people and the ancients of the priests, and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entrance of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee, and say, Hear the word of the Lord. O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus saith the Lord of, of God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, concerning which whoever heareth his ears will tingle, because they have forsaken me and have, dis, uh, have uh, desecrated this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah excuse me, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They've built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spoke it, neither came it in, into my mind. Well, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall be no more called the valley of Topheth or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, I will make void the council of Jude and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall with the sword before their enemies. 
and by the hands of those who seek their lives and their carcasses will I give to be food for the fowls of the heaven, for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate as an hissing. Everyone that passeth by it shall be appalled and hiss because of all its plagues. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their own sons. Now, mess is pretty gruesome, isn't it? But that's the idea of a city besieged. This is what goes on. Um, and they shall eat the flesh of his friend in the siege and distress with which their enemies and they that seek their lives shall distress them. Then shalt thou break the flask in the sight of men that go with thee. Um, besiegement. Uh, it is utter distress. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. The blessings and cursings of evil. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Forty nine through fifty eight. Verse fifty eight forty nine of Deuteronomy twenty eight, verse forty nine. The earth shall bring the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now we're right in the middle of Daniel, and that's exactly what's going on in Daniel, isn't it? A nation of fierce countenance, who shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed. Who also will not leave thee either grain, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy cows, or the flocks of thy sheep, till he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fortified walls come down, wherein thou trustedest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the fruit of thy sons, the daughters whom the Lord hath given thee, in the siege, in the distress wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. Uh, you can see how this, what, that's the depth of the word anguish and distress. Anguish and trouble. Uh, let's, uh, I don't have it, I don't think. I do. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 anguish and trouble have gotten hold of me second corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 the apostle paul experienced trouble and anguish and look if you will in verse 8 we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Um, look in 1 Corinthians 4.9 1 Corinthians 4.9 uh, you know that the apostles were constantly persecuted uh, divested especially in Jerusalem it was terrible there but look in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9 uh, Paul is using sarcasm here uh, he's really trying to 
uh, prick the conscience, if you will, of the Corinthians, just how worldly and disloyal they really were. <laughs> and he says, I think that God hath set forth, hath set forth us, the apostles, last as it were, appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Ye are weak, but we are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Uh, so understand the sufferings of the apostles. The sufferings of the apostles. Anguish and trouble have taken hold upon me. Um, I, I looked in the book, I think I like to grab that word anguish a little bit better. Look in the book of Psalms chapter 69. Psalms chapter 69. I think, I think that's what I want. I'm on a limb here. I thought the word anguish was in here, but I don't think it is. But the idea here it will help us. This is messianic, and this is viewing Christ at the cross. And if you'll notice in Psalm 69, Psalm 69, verse 20, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my food, and my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Their table became a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Um, look in verse 32. The humble shall see this and be glad. Your heart shall live but that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Um, that's the idea. That gives a picture of anguish. A, a situation that gets hold upon you. Causes distress. And the psalmist says his delight is in the commandments of the Lord. Those are those direct orders of God. Uh, we can, that's the key for the believer. Uh, delight, joy is always there. Uh, the person who takes joy out of out is you. That can be from sin. Uh, that can be from lack of faith in a, cer in a cer certain situation. Uh, the Psalms begin that way. If you look back in, in Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Joy, unfortunately the world has to have it manipulated by physical things. Uh, the, the believer can have joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, Paul wrote that in prison. Um, we know the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So look here in Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his what? His delight is in the law or word of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate 
day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Um, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. We can always have delight in our God. Uh, there should always be a delight in his word, a rejoicing in the Lord. Okay. I'm going to finish this section. Finally. Look in, back in Psalms 119. 144. We go back to this theme in this particular section about righteousness. And it says, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Present tense. Not was, or I hope it will be, is. And that tense is constant present. Is, is all the time. <laughs> That's the idea. Um, the, uh, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Uh, now, testimonies is that is that adjective, isn't it? Testimonies. Um, an example of testimonies would be what? Ten nope, mm -hmm. that be commandments. How about the ark of testimony? That which is a witness, uh, that which is seen, the testimonies, uh, those things that God has done. When you're thinking of the ark of the testimony, uh, you're thinking of that, um, that, um, um, that mercy, the, the lid of mercy, the ark of the testimony. Um, and the lid, the mercy seat, or the mercy lid uh, that was over the law under the um, cherubim. Okay, the testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Give me understanding that I may live. Um, we have already looked at the righteousness of God in depth. So I'm not going to repeat that all over again. But notice how vital the testimonies are. The Word of God is. The life is in the Word. The life is in the Word. And that's something we need to appreciate. We... Um, I, I remember when I first started going over to Africa... And the fellows would take me somewhere, and I'd begin to teach. And um, nobody moved. So I taught a little longer, <laughs> and nobody moved. They didn't care about anything else. They just wanted to hear the Word of God. And it wasn't in nice air conditioning that Ben don't like. But it was <laughs> nice. it was nice air conditioning. There's no nice air conditioning. There was no de decent seats to sit on. There was none of that. No, no comforts. Um, uh, on the bare ground, and I don't know how African women do it, but they can sit there for hours with their children on them and just sit just straight up. For, it's like they lock in their back or something, and they can sit there like that for hours. <laughs> they just put a mat down. And that, uh, huh? I guess it's what they're used to. Yeah, they, right. They're, they do. They, they're brought up that way. But it still amazes me. I mean, it's just, my back would be done. 15 minutes, it'd be over for me. I sit there all day. Uh, that word was that important to them. They would walk for miles. I, I know in Swaziland. Some of them we had to get because of their age. 
course, nobody wears a wristwatch. That tells you something. Uh, uh, so, uh, but they would walk for miles to come to the services. They'd stay for hours and they'd walk back home. Uh, it meant something to them once they got there. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's uh, let's think about this for just a minute. And the idea is. Give me understanding that I may live. Give me understanding that I may live. Now, we've broached that subject several times, too. We might review it in a minute. But I am interested in this idea that I may live. Uh, let's begin at, at the uh, subject with our Lord Jesus Christ. Look with me in the book of Luke, chapter 4. Luke, chapter 4. temptation of Christ and you remember that uh, this this first temptation is about moving out of the command of God and the will of God to do something outside what God had commanded Jesus to say and do and Luke chapter 4 verse 4 I'll start in verse I better start in verse 2 and 40 days tested by the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended, he afterward was hungry. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God. Boy, that's the old hiss from the pit, isn't it? Uh, the religious leaders mocked Jesus. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Doubting. Command this stone that it may, may be bread. And you think, well, what? who cares? No, that would move our Lord outside the sufferings of God and the Word of God. And it would be tempting. Forty days, forty nights. And Jesus answered him saying, ah, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, what does this go back to? Anybody know? Well, the margin will tell you that, yeah. Deuteronomy 8. Mm -hmm. Manna. Remember when God gave commandment about the manna. And sure enough, they didn't keep it. They didn't, they didn't follow what God told them to do. And it was so simple. It was so simple. Um, and that's where this comes from. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Um, when we start our camps over in Africa... Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the... You, do you know that song? That course? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right? And, and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Alleluia. Then we go to chapter 7. Uh, ask, seek, and knock. And then we come to Luke 4. Man shall not live by bread alone. You get the idea, right? Okay, but by every word of God that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Um, uh, how true is that for us? Give me understanding that I may what? Live. Uh, it shows you how powerful the Word of God is. 
Um, look in the book of, of Hebrews. We've done that many times. But look in Hebrews chapter 4. It states it clearly to us. This just isn't an Old Testament idea. Uh, this belongs to the believer today. Hebrews chapter 4. And this is in reference to what? The day of provocation. Chapter 4 starts out by telling us that the word did not profit them. The gospel that was preached didn't have an effect because why? They didn't believe it. It wasn't mixed with faith. Now look in verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is scattered into... I'm sorry. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased. That's the word Sabbath. Ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor. Now this is the um, paradox. This is a paradox. Let us labor. It's also an exhortation. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. That's the paradox, and it's also the exhortation. It's saying, stop a minute, you Hebrew believers. Remember, they were being tempted to go back. Uh, and he's saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let us labor... But there's a change of agenda. Uh, this comes from Matthew. Right? Come unto me, all ye that labor, and get a hammock and do nothing till Jesus comes. No, 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 no. That's not what it says. <laughs> Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Take my what? Yoke upon me. And learn of me. Um, I remember way back in the day uh, when Athens Bible Church was being started. And my father, he would get the people that were going with him in his car to our home. We'd have lunch and then we'd go up over to Athens. And we'd have church there in the uh, different places we had church. It could be interesting sometimes. And um, we would see oxen. Um, driving out toward, would it be Londonderry, Rich? Out toward Londonderry on 50? All right, there's hills there just straight up. And they could cut the trees down, but they couldn't get them down. You can't send equipment up those hills. They'll just roll. So they used oxen. And when you see um, that yoke, there's, that yoke has two, two, I'll call it harnesses to it, I guess. Right neck harnesses to it. And then you'd see a guy with a nice pointy stick. All right. And sometimes he'd just use the end of it to tap them and let them know. And then other times he'd let them have it in the neck. Because you can't let that ox turn around on you. You do your, your, your toast, okay? So... <laughs> Um, and that yoke, it was a double harness, so to speak. Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. Side by side. That's how the yoke was used. Side by side. And what? Learn of me. That's what discipleship is. Here, it's the same idea. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into what rest? The cessation of our own labor. And to labor for the Lord. Lest any man fall after the same example of what? Unbelief. For the word of God is... Now, that word living is quickening. It means to make alive. Quickening is better than that translation. It really is. 
Quickening means to make alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's where the understanding comes in. It's that sharp sword, that sharp two-edged sword. See? And it goes to work on us. And we need that. We need, we need that. Um, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him that we have to do. Uh, it is quickening, reviving, making alive. Uh, that's the ability of the Word of God. Look in the book of First um, Peter. First Peter. First Peter, chapter one. We begin the chapter with being born again, and we end it with being born again. <laughs> We're born again by a living hope. And notice in 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed. The seed that perishes, you see. But of the incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is like grass, and all the glory of man like the flower of grass. The grass withereth, the flower falleth away. That comes and that goes. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The word of the Lord endureth forever. Okay. Now let's look at this idea. A call for illumination. A call for illumination. Understanding. And this isn't, it, it involves academics. I mean, obviously it involves the mind, uh, seeing, uh, and logic, and so forth. But it's spiritual. Um, for example, spiritual things like the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Um, the love that passeth understanding in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. So this is a different kind of understanding. It's spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Um, that's one of my griefs with the Christian church today. Uh, there is not the kind of preaching and teaching that drives to understanding the Word of God. It's about making a point through entertainment or through storytelling or what have you. Uh, that's not what the psalmist, I don't think the psalmist would go for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, the testimonies are everlasting. Understanding that I may what? Live. That I may live. All right, let's look in, uh, well, we're, we're out here in the new. Look in the book of Colossians. Sometimes I get those superficial Christians in the back of my vehicle. Uh, some of these young kids. And they want to talk about Jesus and all of that. And it's what Jesus has done for me lately. That's, that's the tune. And then I'll say, that's wonderful. You're believe Who is he? I don't know. Well, what, how would you go about understanding who he is? They don't know. <laughs> uh, you see, that's, that's without understanding. You see, there's knowing about something, and then there's understanding what it is, you see. Uh, and that's what we're to come away with. 
So look in Colossians chapter 1, verse 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. In Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Um, understanding is knowledge of the Holy One. Now, it isn't the uh, knowledge like the Gnostics or the academic intelligent. That's not what we're talking about. This is divine enlightenment, illumination, that leads to understanding. Uh, Paul said this in, in Colossians 1, 9. This is all a prayer down through here, by the way. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. See the designation there. Spiritual understanding. That why? That ye might walk worshipfully of the Lord and do all pleasing. Being fruitful unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay. Let's go to Psalms 111 for a moment. Psalms 111. And we're going to have to stop here. Psalms 111. And let's look toward the end of this psalm. I'm going to start in verse 7. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his commandments are sure. He sent redemption to his people. Sorry, I skipped the verse. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in all truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people and hath commanded his covenant forever holy and reverend is his name the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom a good understanding have all they that do his what Amen. you have to do to understand faith is invoked faith demands what Action. Faith demands action. That's what James said. I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith demands action. Uh, all, that have all his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Okay. We're going to end there. All right. Now, where did I put my prayer requests? Here they are. Okay, we want to remember our missionaries, especially Robert Marsh. Manic eye suffering. He just got done with COVID. And, um, and now he's gotten into this uh, back problem. So let's pray for that. I, I know that's excruciating uh, to have a herniated disc. Um, so let's pray for the marshes. Okay. Uh, John LaBelle was mentioned. Ventilator dialysis. Looks like it's attacking his kidneys, so we need to appreciate that. Stan and Linda, I want to continue to pray for them. Uh, the early onset. 
Ryan Hatfield, pray for him in his recovery. Of course, we're praying for the Hill family, the loss of David Hill. And just pray for that. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a hard situation. All right, any other prayer requests that you would like to add or praise or testimony at this time? I'm sorry. You know, Patty went on to be with the Lord. Yeah, cancer. I'm sorry. I'm may I, I might have left that out or was during that period of time with the Zoom and all that. Uh, Barry went out to California and then he had problems and had to have surgery and come back. Um. But yeah, she went on to be with the Lord. Who, who's this? Who is this, Pastor? Um, Patty Hartman. It's something we brought up quite a, quite a while ago. Okay. Don't know. I didn't get around to the call for her yet this week. I have trouble getting a hold of her. She doesn't always answer. So what I think I'm going to do now is just go ahead and give her a verse through the, through the answering machine and just a quick word of prayer. I think that's the best way to go on that for now. I know we got a left leg. It's not moving. That can't be good. Uh, so let's pray for that. I wish that place would get some balance and let her go see her doctor or surgeon. Get that, somehow get it corrected or strengthened or something. Okay, any other prayer requests? Let's pray for the butcher home. Let's pray for Nancy Butcher, David, and Sharon, loss of Everett, and also continued ministry after. Okay. okay, any other prayer requests tonight? Uh, let's pray for David Hill's daughter and wife at the loss of David and uh, any concerns thereafter. Let's pray for that. Okay. All right. Tonight, I'm going to, now don't forget our missionaries, uh, not only the Marshes and, and, uh, and also let's remember the Bronx, I guess they're coming over here, so let's pray for that. I hope they can get back in. Uh, so let's pray for them. Uh, there's a lot of needs and concerns there that need to be addressed. All right, uh, let's pray also for um, Heritage Bible Church and Missions. Uh, let's keep in mind uh, the pastors, the pastors especially. James Lukinji, Bamba Truth Bible Church, 
Pastor David and Pastor Justice, Truth Bible Church, Cayman Cooley, Kipalonga. Uh, also remember, if you would, please, uh, Pastor Obadia in Impeji. Uh, let's continue to keep in mind Pastor and Dr. Kachukurume in the Democratic Republic of, of Congo and Christopher in Goma. Uh, let's uh, remember our contacts in, in Kenya and let's continue to keep in mind um, Swaziland, East Swatini, South Africa. Okay, any other prayer requests? All right, Millie, we're going to have you start tonight, if you don't mind. Uh, we'll have Millie pray, and then Sharon, and then uh, we'll have uh, Lynn, and then I'll end up. How's that tonight? Okay? Okay, so if you'd start us off, Millie, I'd appreciate it. Well, dear Heavenly Father, I sure appreciate your having the different pastors that are awful if our son they helped us get through all this ordeal that we had thank you dear father for the, all those pastors that helped us and i also like to pray for those poor people that are involved that are involved in this awful hurricane i'd like to see their electric get back on and and hope pray that there's not a lot of dead people because of this and it's like David said, my son David said, let's be doers of the word, not just talkers, okay? Thank you, dear Father. I pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Father, we continue in prayer and we praise you today for who you are. We thank you, Father, for the word of God that when trouble and anguish take hold upon us, we can delight in thy commandments. And Father, we thank you for one another tonight. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you, Father, for an open tomb. Father, we just pray that you would bless us, that your face would shine upon us as we'd be following close to you, yoked together with you, learning of you, understanding. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding um, is understanding our Lord, and in him is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, Father, we would pray for comfort of those that have lost loved ones over the, over the last couple of years here. And Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for your comfort and consolation. And Father, we would uh, pray today uh, for the entire Hill family. And we pray for Millie and for uh, Carol and Brenda and Linda and her family and uh, Becky and her family and Cindy and her family. And Father, we would also pray for Crystal and also April. And, uh, Father, we just pray that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ would be their hope and their stay. And, Father, we pray that they would be centered on him. Father, we, uh, we thank you uh, for the testimony of David that he left with us and many others. Father, we pray for um, the butcher home. And, Father, we just pray for Nancy that she may see salvation in the person of Christ as Sharon is teaching and, and showing her the Word of God. We pray for David uh, and his future wife for the same. Uh, Father, we would pray for Ben tonight. We pray for this uh, time uh, to equalize things out. We just pray that uh, you'd give the folks there uh, wisdom and Ben as he would implement these things. Uh, we do pray for Joshua, recently saved. We pray that he would be walking with you in the word of god pray for ryan tonight pray for his recovery pray for stan and linda with the early onset uh, and the many um, uh, the, the the many uh different uh challenges that that brings uh, we pray for gail and tom and uh, we thank you for the uh for that round of chemo being accomplished we pray for a clear report uh, Father, we would um, pray for Lois, and we just pray for her um, for her situation. We know that uh, that's going to take some adjustment, and we just pray for that. Uh, Father, we pray for our missionaries. We pray for Antofagasto tonight. Uh, Father, we pray for Mark and Becca, and we pray, Father, for uh, the Flinks and Pastor Andres and family. And, Father, we pray for the church to be built in the near future. Father, we thank you for the meeting on the beach, uh, for services. We just pray that you'd bless them. Father, we pray for Tamuco Bible Institute. We pray for the, um, uh, we just pray for the Thompsons, Daryl and Erlene. And, Father, we pray that you would bless Radal as they are, um, as they are mentoring there, that it might be a church that is indigenous. And, Father, we pray for both the full-time and part-time students attending uh, that institute. We pray, Father, for commitment to, um, to the practical training there. Uh, Father, we pray for the one who's went astray, that he might uh, receive conviction and be brought back, repentance, and be brought back to, you, to the fellowship there. Uh, Father, we just uh, pray uh, tonight for the Bronx. We pray for these um, very heavy concerns that they have and needs on the mission field. Uh, we pray that that building would be built now. And, Father, that there would be a central location and uh, a, place, a place of worship and prayer in the community. And, uh, Father, we lift that before you today. Father, we pray also for Village Mercy and the outreach that it has uh, in, integrated in the ministry. Uh, Father, we would, um, uh, we would also pray today for uh, Heritage Bible Church and Missions Uganda, Kenya, Democratic Republic of Congo, East Watini, South Africa. Pray for James Menissi Knowledge in uh, East Watini. Pray uh, for pastors 
James Lukingi, and Pastor David, Pastor Justice, and Pastor Obadia in these three places, Bamba and uh, Kamon Kuli Kipilonga, and also uh, there in Impiji. Father, we would uh, pray for Kachukurume, Democratic Republic of Congo, and we pray for Bukavu in a special way and the Bible study that's been established at the college, local college there. We would pray for Goma. And Father, we pray for the situation with the earthquake as well as COVID and the displacement of many. And Father, we pray that this would be handled and would be taken care of with the government for the people. Uh, we lift that before you today. Pray for Christopher and others. Uh, Father, we would uh, pray uh, for those uh, unsaved loved ones. We lift that before you tonight. We pray for those of us that are, that are working. Pray for uh, our safety at work and uh, on the road. We lift that before you today, too. Uh, Father, we thank you for one another and to be praying for one another as a community of believers. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right, oh, man. I'm sorry. You... Oh, a little bit. I'm just a little yeah, bit. You need to go. I'm praying you make it safely home. Okay. Okay, we got a little work to do up here. I'm going to put Ben to work. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> he's going to take care of the inside. I'm going to mow the outside. We're going to work as a team here and see if we can't get that done. <laughs> Then I'll go home. Yes, ma'am, I'll be careful going home, yeah. Millie. I will. Okay. 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 Uh, it's God bless you, Millie. We'll see you uh, Sunday. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, did you want to say hello? Yeah, I did. All right. Okay. How you doing, Rich? I can tell you're struggling. What's up? Uh, you, you look as tired as I feel. Yeah, 